أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فقالوا مهما تأتنا به من آية لتسحرنا بها فما نحن لك بمؤمنين فارسلنا عليهم الطوفان والجراد والقمل والضفادع والدم آيات مفصلات فاستكبروا وكانوا قوم مجرمين صدق الله العظيم We read in the preceding آيات number 131 and 130 that according to the general rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that whenever a messenger was sent to a nation, smaller inflictions were sent to them to arouse them, to awake them from their deep slumbers. So this was the condition going on in Egypt for a long time. When Hazrat Musa alayhi salam was sent to Firaun, and they rejected, and they didn't believe in him. But whenever some... Infliction came to them. وَقَالُوا مَهْمَا تَعْتِنَا بِهِ مِنْ آيَا O Musa, whatsoever sign you may produce, لَتَسْحَرَنَا بِهَا To bewitch us with it. You are trying your sorcery still on us. So whatever you do, فَمَا نَحْنُ لَكَ بِمُؤْمَنِينَ Rest assured, we are not going to believe in you. That was the arrogance. But that, the arrogance, you know, was very temporary, you will find in the following ayat. Later, they said, okay, if you can remove this thing from us, we shall believe. But when the thing was removed, they went back on their words. فَاسَلْنَا عَلَيْهُمُ tufan. We sent upon them the flood, wal-jarad, and the locusts, wal-kummala, the lice, and maybe khatmal. Kummal and khatmal, you know, this, they are very near. You know, the vermin, wal-zafadi'ah, and the frogs, wal-dama. And the blood, ayati mufassanat, clear signs, distinct from each other, one after the other. Fastagbaru wa kalu kama mudrimin. They behaved arrogantly, and they were a guilty people. Falamma wakale mulzis. Whenever you know the plague fell upon them, kalu ya Musa alana rabbak bima ahid aindak. They came to Moses. O oh Moses, please call upon your Lord on the basis of the covenant that you have with him. Now they believe from the depths of their hearts that he is a messenger. They are invoking. Bima indak, bima ahida indak. You have a covenant with him. So now please invoke that covenant and pray, pray to him on our behalf. Now in kashafta under this, if you Save us from this, this punishment and this infliction. لَنُؤْمِنَنَّ لَكَ We shall believe in you. وَلَنُرْسِلَنَّ مَعَكَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And then we shall let your people, Bani Israel, go out of Egypt with you. فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَلْهُمُ الرِّجْدَ إِلَىٰ عَجَلٍ هُمْ بَالِغُوهُ But when we remove from them the infliction, the plague, to a term they should reach, Lo! إِذَا هُمْ يَنْكُسُونَ They would break their promise at once. That was their you will practice. فَنْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ Now came the final verdict, the final punishment, extermination. فَنْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ So we took the retribution from them. We took the revenge from them. فَغْرَقْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمْ And we drowned them all. All the armies, you know, of Fir'aun who had gathered to pursue the, the Bani Israel, whom Hazrat Musa had taken and they were going out of, the, of this Egypt, this country. But now, Firaun and all his armies, Junudahu, they were following them. فَانْتَقَمْنَا مِنْهُمْ فَاغْرَقْنَاهُمْ فِي الْيَمْ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا We drowned them in the sea because they had belied our revelations. وَكَانُوا عَنْهَا غَافِلِينَ 
and they were heedless about them. They paid no attention to our ayat, our revelations, our miracles. وَأَوْرَسْنَ الْقَوْمَ قَوْمَ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا يُسْرَعْفُونَ مَشَارِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَمَغَارِبَهَا And we made the people who were oppressed, because Bani Israel were oppressed badly in Egypt. We made them inherit the east and the west of the land, أَلَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا Whom we have blessed. This is the land of Palestine. We find in Surah Al-Bani Israel, سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا. This is a blessed land. So east of it and west of it all was inherited by now Hazrat Musa and the nation of Hazrat Musa because before entering this land Hazrat Musa had already died. That we have read you know in Surah Al-Maida. But the end result is that we, in, we, make, we, we made them the inheritors of the east and the west of the land which, is, which was blessed by us. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ الْحُسْنَ عَلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ And all the good promises of your Lord were fulfilled for Bani Israel. بِمَا صَبَرُوا Due to their patience, forbearance, as a whole, they cooperated with Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. Because when he said, and he fixed at a time that all of us from all the hooks and corners of the country should come out and go out of Egypt, they all, you know, obeyed him. And they took all the, persever all the persecution with perseverance and patience. So the reward is of Bima Sabaru, because they showed patience and forbearance. But Dammarna Makana Yasna Firan. And we destroyed all that Fir'aun, Waqamuhu, and his people had built. Very big palaces they had built. Wamakanu Yarishun. And the big edifices that they had raised, like the World Trade Center. What a high edifice, you know, raised over the ground, the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the same way, those people had also raised edifices and big buildings and big towers. But we all were destroyed. And we brought the children of Israel across the sea. Rescued them. They came to pass by a nation who were meditating on their idols. A nation was there. Some people, they had idols, worshipping them. And you know, they, they said... They used to sit in meditation before those idols. Now look to these people. They said, Oh Musa, you made for us also a, a god like this, as they have the gods. Now what's the reason behind it? There's a big philosophy behind it. If you know Dr. Radha Krishnan's name, you know, he was at one time the president of the Republic of India and he was a very big philosopher. At that time, they were the two most celebrated philosophers in the world, Bertrand Russell and on the other hand, Radha Krishna. Both were of the same age, but they were absolutely opposite to each other. Bertrand Russell, logical positivist, Denied everything except matter. Nothing is there except the matter. And the biggest spiritualist of this age in philosophers was Radha Krishna. He has written History of Indian Philosophy in two volumes. Very small print, very voluminous books. And there he had given a philosophy of worship of idols. He says because it is, it is difficult for people to meditate on Allah... Because they have not seen him. As the Lama Iqbal says, Khugare pae kare mehsoos thi insa ki nazar. Maanta phir koi andekhe khuda ko kyo kar. People are used, you know, to see something, to believe in it. And if you have some visible object before you and you meditate, concentrate your attention, it becomes easy. So he said that actually we were not worshipping these idols. We also knew they are of stone. This is the philosophy that, you know, the apology, you may call it, 
for idolatry that Radha Krishna produced in a very philosophical way. But you know, to, to meditate and to have a, construction, a concentration of your attention, you must have something before you which is visible, palpable. Who gare pay kare mahsoos thi insaan ki nazar, maanta phir koi andhe ke khuda to kyo kar. And this very argument has been used by some of the mystics. I disagree with them. That because to meditate on Allah is difficult. So first of all you meditate on your murshid, on your mentor. Always think he is with you, because you can imagine his, his figure, you can keep in mind. So keep him in mind every time, every moment that he is with you, he is with you, he is with you, he is seeing you, he is seeing you. This auto-suggestion, you know, that is used there. Then turn to the Prophet ﷺ. tasawur e shaykh then tasawur e nabi and then tasawur Allah, and then you can will be able to meditate, you know, on Allah, the unseen. But when this lesson was being given by Shah Abdul Aziz to Sayyid Ahmed Brailvi, he said, what if I die during this process? When I am meditating on my Shaykh, it means I have accepted him as the Lord. He is with me. This is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I am imagining that my Shaykh is with me every time. So actually I will be, I will be committing a very big shirk with Allah. And if I die... What will happen? So actually he gave up all those practices. So this is the philosophy behind this. What? He said, you are people driven by false passions, ignorance. These people are going to be destroyed and shattered in what they are doing. And whatever they are doing is in vain, without any reality. He said, Should I seek another God for you except Allah? And he had raised you above and exalted you over all the nations of the world. And Jainatum in Ali Firon, O children of Israel, just remember. When we saved you from Firon's people, Yasumulatum Suwal Azab, they were subjecting you to the worst of the punishments and chastisement. Yukatiluna Abnakum, they were killing your sons. Yastayuna Nisakum, keeping your women alive so that they can serve in their houses as maids, but with the boys to be killed. So that the strength of the tribe remains, you know, restricted. And definitely in all this, there was a big testing and trial and tribulation for you from your Lord. And we appointed with Musa, made an appointment with Musa for 30 nights. Come to the mountain of Tur. Meditate here. Vaadna Musa arbaina lelatan vatmam naha be ashrin. And then we completed it with, with more ten. Fatamma mi qatu rabbihi arbaina lela. So the appointed time of his Lord was completed to forty days. Here it is nights, forty days and nights. And now here, from here you know, these mystics, you know, they have extracted and inferred the idea of chilla. Also the tablighi jama, you know, chilla, 40 days and nights. If you remain, you know, just cut off from your family, cut off your from business. You are, you know, only involved in salah and, you know, zikr and propagating the word of Allah and message of Allah. It's different what they are propagating. But you know, this methodology is quite sound. If you go away from your surroundings, and you remain in an environment where there is deen, there is the best, you know, all the the uh, the uh, needs of deen, they are performed. You know, he, that person will not be praying any prayer except with, with congregation for 40 days. So this helps a person to, to, to change, you know, his direction and course of his life. 
وبعدنا موسى ثلاثين ليلة واتممنا ها بعشرين فتم ميقات ربه أربعين ليلة وقال موسى لأخيه هارون and Musa said to his brother Harun Harun was the elder brother but you know he was an assistant a wazir to him take my place among my people to aslih and try to keep the things reformed don't follow the path of the mischief mongers this was the advice, the parting advice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called me, I am going to tour. Now you be my vastirant here and you take my place. You look after the affairs of the community, but you don't follow those who are the mischief mongers, but try to reform them. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ مُوسَى لِمِيقَاتِنَا وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ A very interesting incident which had happened, you know. And when Musa came, on the appointed time, time appointed by us, Miqatena, Wakallamahu Rabbuhu, and his Lord had a conversation with him. Now the desire, you know, rose up in his heart, and he requested, Oh my Lord, show me thyself. I will see you. I will look at you too. I, I may behold you. Rabbi Arani Andurilayt. Qala lantarani. Allah said, no. You can never see me. Fandur walakin unzurilayt al-jabal. But you fix your gaze on that mountain. Fain istakarra makanahu fasofa tarani. I will throw one of my tajallis over the mountain. This will come later. If it, can, if it can stand it, bear it, fast, fast in its place, then you also hope that you can see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّا رَبُّهُ الْجَبَلِ When his Lord shined to the mountain. Now this is shining, tajalli, shining. He sent down a shining of his own person. On the mountain. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّا رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ Through a shining of his own on the mountain. Or you may translate it, he shone to the mountain. But shone, S-H-O-N-E. Shine, shone, shone. He himself shone, his own person. Or he threw a shining of his person on the mountain. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّا رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكَّرٍ he, it made the, that, uh, that mountain crumble to dust. وَخَرَّ مُوسَى سَعِقَى And Musa also fell down unconscious. فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَى When he recovered, قَالَ He said, Subhana, glory be to you, O oh my Lord. تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ I turn to you for forgiveness. I repent to you. وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ and I am the first who believes in you. Whatever you said, that you can't see me, well, I believe fully in it. Kala ya Musa, inni istafaitu kala nas bi risalati. Bi risalati or risalati. And he said, O Musa, I have made you superior and chosen you above all, a whole of the mankind. By my messages, and by my conversation. This conversation while on this earth, nobody else except Moses had with Allah. Not even Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must admit. You know this can be a fazila, partial fazila, total fazila, total superiority belongs to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over all the messengers and prophets. But partially, in some one aspect or the other, some other messenger might have some something, you know, more than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was given. Just as the miracles, the visible miracles, the topmost were given to Hazrat Isa. We have read in Surah Al-Baidah. In the same way, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا In Surah Al-Nisa, we read it. And Allah had a conversation with Moses. Just as conversation is done, not 
You know, it's not an istara. قَالَ يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنِّي اسْتَفَيْتُكَ عَلَى النَّاسِ بِرِسَالَاتِ وَكَلَامِ وَبِكَلَامِ فَخُذْ مَا عَطَيْتُكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِ Now hold fast to what I am giving to you. And be from amongst the grateful. What he was giving? Torah. And he has called Moses there to give him Torah. And I, you know, in the last, last Friday sermon I told you that although the messengers of Allah, the prophets, they are innocent from the very birth. But still, to receive the word of Allah, they had to undergo very strict, you know, spiritual exercise, you may call it, to be able to receive the word of Allah. This spiritual exercise, this meditation, keeping fast for 40 long days, it was necessary for Musa to be able to get and receive Torah from Allah. The same is given in Injil about Hazrat Masi. It is not mentioned in the Quran, but in Injil it is mentioned 40 days. Again, there are 40 days. We know that Muhammad Sassam used to go to Are Hira, cave of Hira, meditate there for days and nights together. And that was necessary. This was, so to so say, a spiritual exercise, so that the soul, the spirit of that person becomes strong enough to receive the word of Allah. So that was it. قَالَ يَا مُوسَىٰ إِنِّي اسْتَفَيْتُكَ عَلَى النَّاسِ بِرِسَالَاتِي وَبِكَلَامِي فَخُذْ مَا عَطَيْتُكَ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ وَكَتَبْنَا لَهُ فِي الْوَاحِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ مَعَيْزَةً And we wrote for him on the tablets, the stone tablets, the admonition and exhortation for everything good, وَتَفْسِيلًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ And details of everything. What does it mean, everything? Details of chemistry and physiology and botany? No. Details of the things which are necessary for guidance. Guidance in this world. Which we pray to Allah. <laughs> this guidance. Whatever is needed for this guidance. Details of all those things. We wrote down in those tablets. Admonition. And you know exhortation for something good. And details of everything which are essential for guiding the man in his conduct in this world. And we said, now hold fast to it, hold it with your full strength. And you command your people also. They should hold to it and the best of it, best thereof. Because, you know, in, our, in all the deen, there are levels which higher, lower also permissible. There are, you know, realized concessions also. Because there are weak people also, strong people also. People of strong will power, people of not so strong will power. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accommodates them also. This is a higher level, you go. If you can't, okay, this is the concession. Now, take the best of it. Try to have the highest level. Try to reach the highest level. Why to be contented with less? What happens to us is, we are contented with the less in religion, but the best in this world. We are after the best. We are trying. We are spending all our time, capabilities, all the faculties Allah had bestowed upon us in having more and more and more and better and better and better of this world. But we are contented. Oh, okay, this is also sufficient. This minimum is also Allah acceptable to Allah. But Allah says, you try to reach the highest level in religion and make yourself contented with the minimum of this world. This should be our attitude. I shall show you soon the abode of the transgressors. Allah declared at that very time that I will turn away those people who are arrogant, haughty, proud in this world. I will Turn their faces away from my ayat, from my revelations, from my signs, because they are arrogant, they are proud, 
without having any reason, any basis. And even if they see all these signs, their demands of all miracles are met, they are not going to believe in them. And if the path of success and righteousness is shown to them clearly, and they see it, they are not going to follow it. Because they don't have any intention for that. In the Malamalu bin Niyat, they are not going to follow it. They won't take it as their path. And if see, you know, the path, the path of wickedness and error, they take it. They adopt it. So this is actually the intentions. As there goes, you know, a very famous hadith, very fundamental hadith. And most of the muhaddisin, you know, they have, they begin with their collections of hadith with this hadith. And the narrator is Hazrat Umar رضي الله تعالى The Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّمْ رِئِمَّا نَوَا Everything depends upon the intention of the person. You know, this Qur'an, as we have read in the very beginning, in the third section of Surah Al-Baqarah, يُضِلُّ بِهِ With this Qur'an, Allah sends people astray. يَهْدِي بِهِ كَسِيرًا يُضِلُّ بِهِ كَسِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَسِيرًا The same Qur'an, but some people get misguidance from it, because their intentions are not pure. They have foul intentions there in their hearts. So even this Qur'an gives them misguidance, not guidance. يُذِلُّ بِهِ كَسِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَسِيرًا سَأَصْرِفُ عَنْ آيَاتِ الَّذِينَ يَتَكَبَّرُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَإِنْ يَرَوْا كُلْ آيَةِ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الرُّشْدِ لَا يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا وَإِنْ يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الْغَيِّ يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا وَكَانُوا عَنْهَا غَافِلِينَ This is because they belied our signs. They have been seeing our signs in the whole of the universe. إِنَّ فِي غَلْطِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَالْفُلْكِ الَّتِي تَجْرِي فِي الْبَحْرِ بِمَا يَنْفَعُ النَّاسِ وَمَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مِنْ مَاءٍ فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ وَتَصْرِيفِ الرِّيَاحِ وَالسَّحَابِ الْمُسَخَّرِ بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَعْقِلُونَ All these physical phenomena are signs. Signs of the greatness of Allah. Signs of the omnipotence of Allah. He is omnipotent. He can do anything. Signs of the complete wisdom of Allah. Signs of the complete knowledge of Allah. All these things, you know, these are signs scattered around you. So actually, who don't look to our signs? And who are, you know, just ghafil, heedless towards them? They are, all their attention is focused, what to eat, and how to enjoy, how to get more and more, how to attain power and authority, how to become famous, so that people should go before us, should know us, should point towards us, he is the person. If we are striving to get these things, we are we, 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 we become heedless towards the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zalak bi annam kazzabu bi ayatina wa kanu anha ghafileen. Walladhina kazzabu bi ayatina wa liqai la akhirate habita ta'amalu. As for those who belie and reject our revelation and signs, wa liqai la akhirate. How many times I have drawn your attention that the basic thing which is mentioned, you know, time and again is Iman bil Akhirah. If they, they don't believe in the meeting with the Lord on the Day of Judgment, if you have, you know, some belief in it, you will think twice before doing anything. You will think twice before uttering a word. I have to go to my Lord. I'll have to account for what I'm doing. I'll have to face that grand accountability of the Day of Judgment. Now you have to think twice before taking any decision in any matter. Will I be able to explain it? No. So don't do it. So this is Iman bil Akhira. Iman if a, if a person, you know, he believes in Allah and all his attributes, he loves Allah, but the Iman in the Akhira is not strong enough. You know, this with the character of the person will not be rectified. He says, I love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What shape this love will take? You know, all the meetings and the processions of Eid Miladun Nabi will be there. But the character will not be there of Nabi. 
the character transformation comes from the iman bil akhirah that we are going to be resurrected and we shall have to stand before our lord amma man khafa maqam rabbihi wa nahan nafsa 'anil hawa fa innal jannata hiya al-mawa unless this is there your actions and deeds they will not be rectified walladhina والذين كذبوا بآياتنا ولقاء الآخرة حبت أعمالهم. All their good deeds will just vanish, will go in vain. As I have said so many times, all those good deeds multiplied by zero become zero. هل يجزون إلا ما كانوا يعملون and they are not recompensed for except for what they had been doing. واتخذ قوم موسى من بعده من حليهم عجلا جسد اللهو خوار and after Musa had departed to Tur in his absence his nation took to the worship of calf and they made out a calf out of the ornaments you know they melted the ornaments of gold and silver and from that you know they cast a a a calf but in that calf was it this calf was emitting a sound as if it was mooing wa laqad takhadha qawm musa min ba'dihi min huliyihim from their ornaments ijlan the shape of a calf jasadan it had a body like calf lahu khawar and a sound was emitting out of it just as if it is mooing alam yaraw annahu la yukallimuhum didn't see didn't they see that that calf didn't talk to them wala yahdihim sabila it couldn't give them guidance for any path it takhadu ho they took to its worship they took it as a as a god wa kanu zalimin and they were the evil doers and the transgressors walamma suqita fi yadihim now when they thought that we have committed a big error some of them not all of them so many of them took to the worship of the calf but some of them you know they realized they had done something very big very wrong falamma suqita fi yadihim we have in urdu muhawara wo haathon ke tote ud gaye you know when one realizes what has happened to me what have i done so that is in arabic suqita falamma suqita fi yadihim wa raw annahum qad dallu and they felt that they had gone astray qalu la illam yarhamna rabbuna ويغفر لنا لنكونن من الخاسرين. and they said if our Lord doesn't have mercy upon us and if He doesn't forgive us surely we will become those who are going to lose who will be losers in the end. so some of them repented and they mended their ways. but what happened to rest of them that has been given in Surah Al-Baqarah I'll mention it again. ولما رجع موسى إلى قوم غضبان أصفا، and when Musa returned to his people in a most angry and sorrowful state, غضبان، most angry. This is you know, this is called in Arabic on the on this فالان on this scale that is superlative thing. غضبان، أصفان، I'm very thirsty. I'm dying of thirst. I'm أصفان. I'm very hungry. I'm dying, dying of hunger. Ana juwan to ghazban. He was very angry, and he was very sorrowful because Allah had told him on tour that your nation has gone astray. It's very important. Surah Taha. You will find. Maybe you have just listened today that when Musa reached before the appointed time. due to his excess of love for allah subhanahu wa taala time was you reach at that time and musa reached there a few days so to say earlier so allah asked him ma ajalaka al qawm ka ya musa why have you left your nation before that appointed time qala hum wala asri ala asri wajil tu ilaik rabbil karma Oh Allah, oh my Lord! I came earlier so that you become pleased with me. To me, my shock, dek, my istiyak, dek. I have come to you out of love before the appointed time. But what was the answer? 
this hastiness, this tajil, although it might be for good, the result is bad. Ujla, tajil, to be hasty, no. For everything there should be a proper time, it should be given. Maybe your intentions are very good. His intention was the best, to please Allah. You call me, I'll come before the appointed time. Ajil to ilayka le rabbi le tarda. But what was the reply? Fainna fatanna qawma ka min baadika wa adullahum usamri. Your people have gone astray. We have put them to trial. And samri had taken them away from the path, straight path. So that was the condition because he was told beforehand on tour that this has happened to your people. So when he returned, he was already, you know, very much angry and sorrowful. And he said, Qal, It appears that he is addressing Hazrat Harun. This very evil way that you have behaved in my absence. Because he held him responsible. I put you in charge of the community affairs. Do you want to outstrip your Lord's commandment and not wait for me? Now this is the Jalali, you know, Tabiya of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. He threw these those stone tablets on the ground. And he held his, his brother Harun with the hair of his head. And dragging him. Oh, you, I put you the in charge of the community affairs, and this is how, this is the result. Kalabna Umma, Hazrat Harun said, Oh, son of my mother, in al Qawm the community, the people, the nation, they overpowered me. They were going to kill me. I wanted to stop them. I said, This is wrong. Don't do it. But they, you know, were so arrogant. Kadu yaktulunani. They were very near to kill me. Fala tushmit be an ada. So let not the enemies gloat over me, rejoice over me. On the one hand, they disobeyed me, they belittled me, they overpowered me, and on the other hand, now you are putting me to task. And you are, you know, Dragging me with the hair of my forehead. Fala tushmit bi al-ada. Don't give these enemies of Allah any chance to laugh at me, to gloat over me, to rejoice over me. Fala tajali mal qawmi zalimin. And don't put me with them. Don't bracket me with these people transgressors. I was not with them. I am not one of them. I wanted to stop them. Qal rabbi khfirli wa liyakhi. He said, Oh, our Lord, oh, my Lord, pardon me and my brother. And admit us into your mercy. And surely you are the most merciful of all the mercifuls. Whosoever has a mercy, you have more mercy than him. Now, this was the verdict that Moses give, gave. Verily, who had taken to the worship of the calf, who had taken the calf as a god beside Allah. In the Nadina Takadulila Sayyadaluhum Ghalabum Rabbi. Very soon wrath of Allah will befall them. Wazillatun Firayat Dunya and humiliation in the life of this world. The Kazalika Najil Muftareen and thus we recompense the forgers. وَالَّذِينَ عَمِلُوا سَيِّعَاتِ ثُمَّ تَعْبُوا As for those who committed evil, but then they repented, then they turned back. مِنْ بَعْدِهَا after that. وَعَمَلُوا And they reviewed and renewed their, their iman and their belief and their faith. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ مِنْ بَعْدِهَا لَغَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Verily your Lord, after their repentance, He is forgiving, He is merciful. Now what happened to those people? who had not repented. This has been given and we have read it in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 
فَإِسْقَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّكُمْ ظَلَمْتُ مَنْفُسَكُمْ بِاتِّخَادِكُمُ الْعِجْلَ فَتُوبُوا إِلَى بَارِيكُمْ فَاقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنَّ بَارِيكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ Now it was commanded to all the twelve tribes that the people of each tribe they should kill the people from their own tribe who committed this shirk and did not repent. And as far as I can remember the number which is given in Bible, in the book of Exodus, is 70,000. It was a big repentance at, at what we call, you know, in our modern terminology, a big purge. Purging of the party, purging of the community. We call an ideological party, an ideological group. It cannot accommodate within its folds people who don't, be, who go against that ideology. If they bear them, if they accommodate them, then the whole community will be corrupted. So this is actually the punishment for apostasy. This is irtidad. And the punishment in Islam of irtidad is killing. And that was the punishment which was given to them. Seventy thousand of them were killed. And you know, every tribe, people who committed that crime were killed by the same people of the same tribe. Because in a tribal society, this is very important. If people of another tribe, they kill them, then they could be, you know, there could be some reaction. So, فَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Kill yourselves, the people belonging to your own tribe. وَلَمَّا سَقَتْ عَنْ مُوسَى الْغَضَبُ And when the anger of Musa cooled down, أَخَذَ الْأَلْوَاهِ Now he took the tablets, you know, that he had thrown on the ground. أَخَذَ الْأَلْوَاهِ وَفِي نُسْخَتِهَا هُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلَّذِينَ هُمْ لِرَبِّهِمْ يَرْحَبُونَ And in its inscription there was the guidance. And the mercy for those who have fear of Allah in their minds and hearts. Again the same thing. هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This Quran is also هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ In the same way those who have some regard for Allah, who are conscious of Allah, only those can benefit from Quran and only those such people could benefit from Torah. وَقْتَارَ مُوسَىٰ قَوْمَهُ سَبْعِينَ رَجُلَىٰ لِمِقَاتِنَا And Musa chose 70 people out of his nation for an appointed time of hours. Now they had killed those, they had executed, but still, you know, for a collective repentance of the whole of the community, the leaders from all the tribes, they were selected, 70 of them. We go in a congregation to Tur, and there we repent before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and ask for His forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive us for this big blunder, big crime, committing shirk, worshipping cow and calf, the most manifest, you know, shirk, type of shirk. So they, so He selected a deputation, you may call it, of 70 people. وَاخْتَارَ مُوسَىٰ قَوْمَهُ سَبْعِينَ رَجُلًا لِمِيقَاتِنَا A time was sixth. فَلَمَّا أَخَذَتْهُمُ الرَّجْفَةِ When they reached there, there was a big earthquake. قَالَ رَبِّ لَا شَيْتَ أَهْلَقْتَهُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ And Moses, Musa said, O our Lord, if you had so wished, you could destroy them before this. وَإِيَّا And even me, who am I? I am also a bondsman of yours, a creature. You created me. I am also a servant of yours. And these people are also servants. Your bondsmen. Had you wished so, you, you would have destroyed us long before. Do you want to destroy us? Because of the sin of those people who were fools amongst us. Although they were quite a big, large number from us. But they were Safi. They were fools. Do you want to Destroy us for what they did. In here, illa fitnatuk. This is nothing but a trial and test from you. Tudillu biha man tasha. And this testing, one thing is either you pass or you fail. In the limtihan, yukram al maru or yuhan. Whenever there is a test, either the person is honored because he passes the test, or he is humiliated because he fails. So in here, illa fitnatuk. It was a test from you. To and for by that test, you 
declare them to whomsoever you like as going, having gone astray. Watadi mantasha, and you lead to the right path, whomsoever you wish. Antavali yuna, you are our protector, you are our friend. Fafir lana, so please forgive us. Warhamna, and have mercy on us. Wanta khairul ghafirin, and surely you are the best of the forgivers. Waktub lana fi hadhi dunya hasana, a very important prayer of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam. And you decide for us, write down for us, waktub lana fi hadhi dunya hasana, good in this world also, wa fil akhirah, and also in the hereafter. You know the prayer, especially in the Hajj, in the Tawaf, between the Rukni Yamani and you know the Hajri Aswad, Rabbana Atina Fid Dunya Hasanatam wa fil Akhirati Hasanatam wa Kina Azab al Nar. So that was the, the dua. Waktub Lana fi Hadi Dunya Hasana wa fil Akhirah. Inna Hudna ilayk. We turn our faces and we turn ourselves towards you. Kala Azabi Usibu Bahima Nasha. Now there are three things that Allah said in reply. As for my punishment and chastisement, I will inflict with it whomsoever I like. But rahmati was said, As for my mercy, it embraces everything. The existence of everything is due to my mercy. I am feeding you. It's out of mercy that I am feeding you. So everything, you know, has... It's share from my mercy. But the third thing, as for a special mercy for which you are, you know, praying. We shall keep it reserved for those who, who are muttaqeen, number one. I will write it down. I will reserve it for, for, for whomsoever. Who have the fear of Allah in their mind, the regard for Allah. And they give the charity, the obligatory charity. And who will be believing in, in our revelations. Who will follow the messenger? Our last messenger, the unlettered Nabi, al Nabi al Ummi. Ummi can have two meanings. Because Muhammad was raised from among the Ummiyin, who was Nabi Basa fil Ummiyin Rasul Aminum. Yatlu alayhim ayati. So from the Ummiyins we have raised him, we will be raising him. And because he was also unlettered, he never received any education in this world. But Allah gave him, He gave him. Nobody can measure it. The ilm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know this, the formal education as you call it, this worldly education that he never had. So he was ummi, unlettered one. So who will be following our last messenger? That is the ummi nabi, al-nazi yajidunahu maktuban, whom they will find written. About whom prophecies they will find. In Torah also, as well as in Jeel also. And he will enjoin to them whatever is right. He will forbid them from whatever is wrong. And he will declare for them as lawful and permissible all the good things. And he will declare upon them haram and impermissible all that is foul. And he will relieve them of the burdens that they would have upon them and the chains of bondages. Now these four words are very important and we have to ponder over them ourselves to reflect for some time. So those people who will believe in him, and they will support him and strengthen him, and honor him, and help him, 
and will follow the light which will be sent down with him. That is this book, Quran. Only such people will be successors. They will have, they will be successful and they will prosper. Now we have to judge ourselves whether we are fulfilling these four conditions. Once I made a lecture, did a, did a lecture on this very ayah. I don't remember whether it has been translated into English also. But in Urdu, you know, it's long being published. Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam se hamare taalluk ki bunyade. What are the basis of our relationship with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? First of all, we believe in him. And what is the result of believing? Obedience. لَا يُمِنُوا عَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يَكُونَ هَوَاهُ تَبَالْ لِمَا جَيْتُ بِهِ You have to submit whatever he had brought. And what is the second requirement of this iman? لَا يُمِنُوا عَدُكُمْ حَتَّى أَتُونَ أَحَبَّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ وَالِدِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَالْنَاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ No one amongst you can claim to be a moment unless I become to him more dear than his father and his son and all the human beings. So these are the two manifestations of Iman, total obedience and love, more than even the father or the son. This is Iman. Number two, Az-Zaruhum, support him, support his cause. He didn't want to establish a kingdom for himself, but he wanted to do. He was assigned a mission by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the support of his mission. That mission was not limited to his life. His risala is going and continuing till, till this, the doomsday. This mission is still alive today. Are we living for that mission? Just remember the concluding ayat of Surah Al-An'am. Inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. Are we living up to it? Strengthening the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa nasaruho. And those who will help him. Did he need any help for his any personal cause? Any personal ambitions? You know, there is the hadith that the Prophet never wanted any personal help from anybody. Even if he was riding, you know, and even something had dropped, he was riding on the camel, and something he dropped down, he would never ask any person to hand it over to him. He will make the camel sit, Descend down himself, take the thing for himself. He never accepted any help on personal account. But the help to establish the deen of Allah. Tunu ansar Allah. Kama qala Isa ibn Maryam alil habareen man ansari ila Allah. Who is going to help me in the cause of Allah, in the way of Allah? I am going towards Allah. I want to establish the deen of Allah. Who comes and joins hands with me? So this is third, Nusra, helping him in his mission. And the fourth one, وَاتَّبَعُنْ نُورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ Follow the book, the light, which has been, which will be sent. Now this is what is being say, said to Moses. Two thousand years before the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fourteen hundred years before Christ. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was to come 600 years after Jesus. So 2,000 years before, الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ النَّبِيَّ الْأُمِّيَّ الَّذِي يَجِدُونَهُ مَكْتُوبًا إِنَّهُمْ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ يَعْمَرُهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَاهُمْ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَيُحِلُّ لَهُمُ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَيُحَرِّمُ عَلَيْهُمُ الْخَبَائِسِ وَيَذَرُعَنُهُمْ إِسْرَهُ وَنَسَرُوهُ وَاتَّبَعُوا النُّورَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ مَعَهُ لَا يَكَهُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ We should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He includes us, all of us, among this group. But we have to make a resolve ourselves. We have to take to this path and make a determination that we shall be fulfilling all these four fundamentals of our relationship with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ يَا يُحَ النَّاسِ Now, Muhammad is being commanded to call to the people. يَا يُحَ النَّاسِ But actually it is directed to the people of the book. The people who believe in Moses. 
to people who believe in Old Testament, in Torah. Qul ya ayyuhal nas, say, O mankind, inni rasulullahi laikum jamia. I am the messenger of Allah to all of you. Alladhi lahu mulku samawati wal ard. I am the messenger of Allah to whom belongs the kingdom and the sovereignty of all the heavens and the earth. La ilaha illahu. There is no God except He. Yohi wa yumeed. He gives the life and causes the death. فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ النَّبِيِّ الْأُمِّيِّ الَّذِي يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَكَلِمَاتِهِ So have faith, believe in Allah and His Messenger. Messenger who is النبي الأمي, the unlettered prophet, الَّذِي يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ He himself believes in Allah, who himself believes in Allah, وَكَلِمَاتِهِ and His words which are coming to him. آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ First of all, the Prophet ﷺ had faith in Qur'an himself, but was sent down to him. He had the faith, he believed that it is coming from Allah. فَتَّبِعُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ And follow him so that you are rightly guided. وَمِنْ قَوْمِ مُوسَىٰ أُمَّتٌ يَحْدُونَ بِالْحَقِّ وَبِهِ يَعْدِلُونَ And among the nation, among the people of Musa, there have been and there are still people which was being recognized by Quran, you know, and by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of them have not gone astray. There are certain people among them. After Abdullah ibn Salam, Allah Ta'ala, he was a very big alim from Yahud and he embraced Islam. So there are, min qawm Musa ummatun, there is a community, some people, yahdun abil haq, who lead people towards truth. وَبِهِ يَعْدِلُونَ And they are, with that truth, they are administering justice. Now, just recall to your mind the ayah. The same is required of us. Ayah number 104 of Surah Al Imran. وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَعْبُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ the truth has been the same throughout. The deen has been the same throughout. The right path has been the same throughout. Only, you know, just, you know, a book, another edition of the same book, and an enlarged, enlarged edition, another enlarged edition. Also, it was the, the book of Allah from the very beginning. But this is the final verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَتَّعْنَاهُ مُسْنَتَيْ أَشْرَةَ أَشْرَةَ أَصْبَاتًا أُمَمًا and we divided them into 12 communities because they were 12 tribes. Bawahayna ila Musa. And we sent our revelations to Musa. Is this Tastahu Qawmuhu? When his people demanded water from him. Anadri bi astark al hajar. You strike the rock with your staff. From Bajasat min husnata ashrat aina. So 12. Springs gushed out of it. But alima kullu nasi mashrabahum. Every tribe, all the people, they knew their place of taking water. Lest they should fight among themselves. Kahi pani pini pilane pe jhagra. Kahi ghoda aage badhane pe jhagra. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them twelve separate, you know, springs. Each one for each tribe. Bazalla Allah adayamul ghamam. And we made the clouds have shadow over them. وَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهُمُ الْمَنَّ وَالسَّلْوَىٰ We sent down upon them man and salwa, the quails. قُلُوا مِن تَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَضَقْنَاكُمْ Now you eat out of all these things which are good, pure, which we have provided you with. وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَاكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَزْلِبُونَ But they didn't do any harm to us. They couldn't do any harm to us. They did harm to themselves. كَانُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَزْلِبُونَ they were doing harm to their own selves, their own souls. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم. The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona. 
is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. One, a Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. Two, a Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Three, a Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four, a Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.